Hello Power Rangers fans and welcome back to Toku Topics. Today, there's a bunch of brown boxes here as you can probably see. So let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. And that kind of fits it a little bit better. So this is my first video in what I'm calling Super 7 Ultimates Week here on Toku Topics because I have five Super 7 Ultimates figures from the first wave of their Mighty Morphin Power Rangers figures. Really, really excited to dive into these guys here. So each one of these is gonna get their own dedicated video, starting with the Green Ranger, then Yellow, then Putty, then Goldar, then the T-Rex Zord. So before we get started here, I have to give a huge, huge thanks to Super 7 for sending all of these over for the purposes of all of these reviews. It was super nice of them to do that, and I'm very excited to take a look at these guys here, starting with Mighty Morphin Green. So we're gonna kind of clean up everything here and take a look at Mighty Morphin Green from Super 7 Ultimates Wave 1. Okay, so here is the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger in his shipper box here. So if you're not familiar with the Super 7 Ultimates figure line, they are a line of 7-inch action figures from Super 7 that are made to order essentially. So basically they announce these pretty far in advance and then they take pre-orders for an extended period of time and then they fulfill those orders. There's usually sometimes some extras left and you can still kind of get them in stock you know, here and there depending on what figure it is after their initial release kind of thing. But basically you have kind of a pre-order window to make sure you're definitely going to get one of these. So they retail for $55 a piece because they include just a plethora of accessories. Really, really cool deep cut accessories from one-off episodes of Mighty Morphin or for all the brands that they do figures of. They just have very in-depth and very thought-out accessories layouts for these guys to really get your money's worth in terms of just a lot of display options and things that other toy companies and other figures wouldn't necessarily include. So Wave 1 of the Ultimates figures was announced in June of 2021. And after a couple of different delays and such like that here, we finally have Wave 1 releasing with Wave 2 and 3 at the time of this video already past their pre-order stages and are slated for future releases here in 2023. But here is the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger, just comes in this brown box with the Super 7 logo, ages 14 plus. It's just a brown shipper box, but on the back it just has a bunch of copyright stuff, you know, choking hazards, it has the kind of barcode for it, the licensed by Hasbro, Super 7 logo, all that kind of stuff. And uh, inside, now I have already opened these boxes, but I have not actually taken the figures out yet because inside each figure was wrapped in plastic, which I've already removed. But check that out. That is sick. So look at this box here. Very reminiscent of the kind of green that was on the packaging for pretty much all of the Mighty Morphin toys from the Mighty Morphin era of during, you know, Bandai America stuff in the 90s. So I really like having that kind of color here. You have this really pretty reflective, kind of try to catch the, catch the light on that, of the dragon coin there, the dragon's Zord coin. So that's really cool. You get the lightning kind of bouncing off of it. Green Ranger, Super 7 right there. It says Ultimates on the top, same kind of reflective thing. And that kind of pattern just continues onto the sides, like so. And on the back, you just get the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers logo and basically it contains one figure with accessories. And as you can, might be able to tell from just the design of the box, this is a little slip case. So without further ado, I want to make sure it's in the frame there. Ta-da, look at that. So that is the Mighty Morphin Green Ranger Super 7's Ultimate figure. And he is packed with accessories. So these guys are not only packed with show accessories but they're also packed with toy accessories and i'll kind of get into what that means in a second once we actually unbox this thing but let's get a closer look before i actually do take everything out of the box so you can see me in there it's very reflective with the plastic so you can see me behind the camera but ignoring me we have the figure itself and you get two tommy head sculpts one just kind of a regular tommy and one under rita's spell with the headband and everything it kind of has a little bit more of an evil eye look kind of a some bags or eyeshadow kind of thing under the eyes there then you get a bunch of different one-off accessories from season two episodes, which we'll get into. You get the Sword of Darkness and the Dragon Dagger. You get a Blade Blaster, which I'll explain why once we open everything up. Really cool stuff. You can see a ton of hands and stuff back there. Hopefully the best you kind of can see. Uh, there is another Dragon Shield back there. Bunch of accessories. And of course the figure itself looks very good. Look at that Power Morpher there, detailed with Power Rangers. Try to zoom that in as best as I can looks absolutely great so there's the bottom of it with the barcode and everything all that kind of stuff and on the back here you have green ranger you have the dragon Zord coin with like actual suit photo of the green ranger and it says which we'll kind of zoom in on here as well we'll kind of put it up on screen tommy oliver the one and only green ranger 
first debuted as the evil Sixth Ranger controlled by Rita Repulsa, and was able to defeat the Power Rangers and the Dino Megazord single-handedly. It took the combined strength of all five Power Rangers to break Rita Repulsa's spell. With his free will returned, the Green Ranger could join the other Power Rangers in their fight against her. Tommy is an excellent addition to the team, wielding the power of the Dragon Dagger, which enables him to summon and control the mighty Dragonzord to help the Rangers fight against evil. So now the next thing to do is unbox this guy and take a look at everything he has to offer in this figure release. And here is the Green Ranger out of the box here with everything that he comes with. So many things, there are so many things in this figure release, so I figured it'd be cool to kind of have the figure box as the backdrop here because it just looks really, really nice. So let's go ahead and start by just taking a look at the figure itself because what better place to start? So this figure is sculpted very, very nicely. So I have never had any Super 7 Ultimates figures before. They do them for a ton of different brands from Ninja Turtles to Transformers, G.I. Joe. So some other Hasbro brands and a bunch of other stuff as well besides just that. But this is the very first time that I've ever had an Ultimates figure in my collection and I'm certainly impressed. So just the, the build of this figure, like it feels relatively substantial. It kind of basically feels heavier than a lightning collection figure kind of similar in kind of just width or not width but kind of just overall weight and kind of just durability feeling as like the three zero kind of figures that they have released for mighty morphin if you're kind of ranging between you're kind of trying to compare all the different versions of the mighty morphin figures on the market that's kind of the range that i'm kind of thinking of there but yeah i mean i think the helmet is captured beautifully here you have the little red there even with the little kind of not silver but i mean i guess it kind of is there right the little silver diamond behind there like they really got that detail in there all of the different uh, silver teeth are painted and the white trim beautiful beautiful head sculpt like i mean it's i think it's a perfect version of the mighty Morphin green suit like it really does capture the look of the dragon ranger suit from the sentai honestly my only like complaints and it's it's minor is that i feel like maybe his armbands are a little too thick like something about it just looks a little too thick. And if we, there is that photo on the back of the box inside, right? So if there, we can kind of try to get the, the look of that. I mean, I guess that is, you know, well, you know, it's not the worst. I mean, that's an actual suit photo, right? Even though this one has a silver power morpher when he should have a gold one, which this figure does have, but okay. Maybe it's not like as inaccurate as I was thinking, not that I thought it was, but I don't know. It just looks a little off, but it's still really good like you know the armbands look good the gold coloring is pretty solid in my opinion you know it's a little shiny but not like overly shiny but not like overly dull i think they captured it very well uh, we'll be able to take the shield off a little bit later but there are diamonds painted underneath there you can kind of see it poking up there because uh, the shield is its own little free form little piece there you have those little design patterns in there and like the engraved etchings and stuff there i mean they captured it very very nicely you have the black lines painted all around the belt as we kind of looked at a little second ago, we'll try to zoom in or kind of try to get as close to the camera as possible. In fact, actually, we can zoom in, I believe. So they do have the Power Rangers logo there, sculpted. They have the Dragons or Coins sculpted. And I mean, for how tiny that is, it's painted very nicely, in my opinion. You can tell it's the coin. You can tell it's the Gold Ranger Morpher, or the Gold Ranger Morpher, the Gold Morpher uh, for the Green Ranger. And I have no complaints there. Like... The green is nice too, you have the nice boot detailing, you have black soles on the boots. Yeah, he looks fantastic. So, kind of breaking down his articulation, as you kind of already saw, his head isn't necessarily on a ball joint, but it can look up and down all over the kind of place. Not really any kind of side to side, but you can rotate it of course. It's a little squeaky, but not like a perfect ball joint, but he does have a little diaphragm joint there that can bend pretty good. The shield obviously gets in the way a little bit there because it kind of comes in contact with the buckle. You do have a full 360 swivel at the torso, which is very nice. The arms, it's a little tricky to get them to move out, but you can move them out like that. And then it's just, I feel like it's a little scary to get that joint to like pop back in on that. Like, I'm not a big fan of that. That feels a little too tight. So maybe try to, if you want to, warm up a couple things with this especially with some head swaps and everything for i think the more bigger figures the monster figures you're definitely going to want to do that but you just want to be careful with this of course it is such a premium you know tag of the price for this you don't want to damage anything and then of course you do have a full rotation there but the shield gets in the way of course you have a single jointed elbow which i know a lot of people are more used to like the double jointed elbows of like on like lightning clashion figures but i think it gives you a good enough range and then the hand has that kind of little hinge and stuff in there and then 
We'll be doing some hand swaps later on, but it just has the very similar kind of lightning collection kind of hand peg that I think pegs in quite easily. You get that nice little click and everything to confirm that it's in there. You can rotate it there at the bands. At the legs here, you can rotate them a little bit there, but not like a ton. Of course, they can move up all the way, kind of to a certain point. They can move back a little bit. You can rotate them at the boot. Single jointed knees as well. You can move the feet as well with a little joint there. And uh, that is pretty much it. So not like as articulated as some kind of figures you might be used to, but I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I think you can still get a lot of pretty good dynamic poses with this guy, or even some nice little static ones and stuff if you want to. I mean, I've never been the best at posing action figures like ever. So for me, this has a pretty good level of articulation that I need. I mean, pretty much for me, as long as these figures kind of have like that kind of articulation, you know, some kind of torso and movement and head and everything, then they got exactly what I personally need for my collection. So for him, that's, oop, as he almost tries to fall over there, don't do that, Tommy. As for that, that's exactly what I would need. We have so many accessories to cover here, but I'm gonna go ahead and start with the hands. So you get two, four, six swappable pairs of hands uh, that are just like actual hands in the box. You obviously get some more hands on the actual arms, but basically you just get a sort of different kind of holding hands. So there's a holding hand. There's a holding hand, and then you're also going to kind of get some more pointing finger hands as well. And you kind of get a corresponding version of that, which this is kind of more, well, actually, this is more of a dragon dagger playing hand. So you kind of have him playing the keys or on the flute and everything, which is really nice. And you kind of get another kind of holding hand. And this is sort of kind of more of a, it's another holding hand, but it's just extended out a little bit more. Obviously, he comes default with a fist for both hands, as you would probably expect. And then his swappable hands, or his swappable arms, actually. Oop. Oh, there's the Toku Topics thing that I've dropped this video. There's always something. And then for his swappable arms, he has these kind of splayed open, not really claw hands, but they're just kind of grabby hands, kind of that thing. So lots of different hands options. We're obviously going to do some hand swapping so I can have him hold some of the accessories for different shots later on in the video and different kind of showcases. But that's all of the hands that he comes with. So, of course, let's take a look now at the weapons that he comes with. So let's start back here. He has the first weapon we kind of see him use, which is the Sword of Darkness, which we get with a lot of Green Ranger figures. You know, it's pretty standard for an evil Green Ranger. Sculpted and painted beautifully. Love the detail and the sculpting and stuff on there. They even got the tiny little like triangle-ish design there. This is like the first time I've ever seen one of these where the tassel piece is actual like tassel. So be a little bit careful with this though. The tape kind of got caught on it and like pulled one of the little tassels out a little bit. So just be a little careful. But it's really cool that you have that's kind of like the same kind of material at the end of a bookmark and you have the handle and stuff there so i'm very impressed with the sword of darkness you also of course get the dragon dagger which is painted beautifully as well you get all the keys painted you even get like the little gold painted there the tiny little green and gold painted lines are there the keys are painted the dragon zord coin is molded on there you get all the little like flute pieces molded on and the mouthpiece is painted very, very impressed with that. We'll dive into these accessories later on because they're for a kind of an alternate mode for this figure per se. So this one right here, this is a fun one. So this is the first one of the Super 7 kind of deep cuts that they have. So do you recognize this? You might not. It was only used It was only used in the Season 2 episode Green No More, but this is the Mega Heater, which was used when Tommy went inside of the monster of that episode and kind of had to blast himself out of there or kind of blast the monster from the inside with kind of this heat gun kind of it's not a flamethrower, but it was kind of a laser gun. And you get this whole thing here. So like, I don't, I can't think of a single figure that's ever come with this thing. So <laughs> I absolutely love this. It's sculpted very nice with kind of all the tubing and the wiring. And it's just a really cool accessory that I just have never seen with Power Rangers figures before. So I love to have it. And same thing with this. This is another season two, one episode appearance weapon. There was a lot of those in Super 7. It's giving us a lot of those in these ultimate figures. This in particular is the sort of power from the season two episode of the Green Dream. And I think here they also sculpted this beautifully for, you know, these weapons that we like don't really get to see too much. We don't get like a perfectly clear look at them or kind of any kind of good reference photos. So for Super 7 to be able to create these or recreate these as well as they have is really impressive with all the gold detail in there and the silver paint. I love the silver trim on the side of this thing. It just kind of gives it a cool look, almost kind of like a Mandalorian Darksaber kind of look. Where it's kind of like that sword within a sword kind of thing. It just, it looks really sweet. So... It's kind of a cool thing for him to kind of hold like this kind of in front of him or something if you wanted to do. I love that. That is pretty neat. So there is the Sword of Power. 
And then of course you also get, actually we'll start with this here as well. We're gonna have to zoom in on this one because it is so tiny. You get a power morpher for him to hold. So while you do have the one on its belt buckle, here's an extended one, which has, or not an extended one, but an open one that has the coin in there. It has the plates, it has the green inside. It has the little handle extended so you can slot your hand through there. I think that is for, I'm trying to think, what is the best hand that would use that one? Probably something like this, like this kind of hand. You would probably have it grip. Yeah, so like a hand like that, you kind of would grip around the handle and then you could recreate the morphing pose or morphing sequence, however you would like with that, but that's kind of the gist of that. But sculpted and painted very nicely for such a tiny accessory. I'm very impressed with by the level of detail they were able to get on that. Even though the power bolts are not painted like the most clean on mine, they're a little sloppy, but it's so tiny that like, I, oh, that's way too far out. That is a lot uh, more than you would probably expect from such a tiny accessory. So before we get to the kind of Bandai 90s toy reference ones, uh, we do have two head sculpts for him, which we're gonna swap. So we have just kind of a regular Tommy. He's just kind of happy. He's just kind of chilling. And you have him with the ponytail. And then you have the evil Tommy with the headband and the eyes, the little green eyes and everything. He's a little angry. He's got the longer hair. So. I know a lot of people are kind of clowning on these head sculpts and I do kind of get it. I mean, you know, even though Super 7 sent these to me for the purposes of these videos, you know, it doesn't mean I have to be 100% positive about everything, but I will say I am not the biggest fan of these head sculpts. They do just look a little strange. I guess I'm just used to the little bit more lifelike look of like the lightning collection heads. These look a little bit more toyetic, which I think is kind of the point of Ultimates. They're kind of supposed to be your Super 7's products in general. This must be a little bit more toyetic, especially with these other accessories that we have here. So I don't really mind that in that regard. Uh, but you know, I like that they're included nonetheless. Whenever we get civilian heads for Lightning Collection or for Power Rangers figures, whether it be Lightning Collection or Ultimates, I think that's always a very nice touch. It kind of harkens back to the original days of the flip head figures, which we will have even more harken backs to in a second. But I do appreciate that inclusion. So let's see how difficult it is or not difficult to swap the heads. So that comes off very easily. I do like actually, and I don't know if this is an intentional detail, but there's actually almost like skin color in there. So I don't know if this is like molded in a skin color and painted green, but just kind of an interesting detail that I noticed there. So you can obviously, you might want to try to warm this up a little bit, but the joint looks very similar to a lightning collection uh, kind of neck joint. So this is kind of pretty much what we kind of expect. And that went on very easy. So there is Tommy there. You can obviously have the same kind of level of articulation which isn't too terrible. And there he is next to Jason David Frank from kind of that era of Power Rangers. And then you can take the head off again, which I think was very easy in that regard, and put the evil Green Ranger head on there. So there he is from the Green with Evil miniseries arc. So very cool, very, very nice with that one as well. And so we'll take that off and put the Green Ranger helmet back on, which actually we're gonna probably have to take off in a second again anyway because we have one kind of like last mode to take a look at this guy before we kind of wrap it up. The final set of accessories here is to recreate the look of the original retro Bandai flip heads. So you get everything you would need for that, which is really, really cool. So let's kind of take a look at these briefly before we actually apply them to the figure. So the original Bandai flip head had all grayed out or kind of a silver plastic of their weapons. So this is what this is supposed to be for the Dragon Dagger. It even has the whole that the original flip heads actually had in their hand to hold the weapons. None of these hands have holes, so they don't have to use that kind of mechanic where they can just hold it. But I really, really like that quite a bit. You can, of course, holster that as well, which we'll take a look at in a minute, but I love that. And then they gave the original Green Ranger figure from the flip head line a blade blaster and that kind of all white plastic as well. Even though he's never had one, he never needed one, but they included one because that's what the Bandai figure had. And then the original Bandai flip head had a removable gold shield because you could remove it obviously to actually do the flip head gimmick but then you could take it and you could put it on jason or you could put it on tommy or kind of whoever you wanted and on here there are the pegs of course to put it back together and i mean it's a pretty faithful recreation to that original one and it's pretty shiny so like hello there i am in the chrome so pretty nice on that one well, i like that quite a bit but also we have a look here for you to have swappable arms to where he does not have the dragon shield on, which is really, really cool. So we will be taking a look at that here basically right now. So 
Essentially, to get the shield off, you're going to have to pop the head off and the arms. Now, the arms, they're in there pretty good. So you're really going to have to apply a pretty good amount of force, and I'm very careful, I'm very scared to do this process, and I will be doing it off camera because I just don't know how long this is going to take. But the idea is try to get as high up as you possibly can on that shoulder, and then just be very careful and kind of tug it out. And like I said, I'm going to finish this off camera because this is a little scary. You might want to heat it up a little bit as well. So we're going to cut to this being done. So I am back with the new arms on nearly 20 minutes after you saw the last second of this video. I can't, it was very difficult. It was very difficult to get these arms on or to get these arms off actually, the old ones. Uh, because basically what keeps happening is you have to get a really good grip at this part of the joint. And what your fingers are going to naturally want to do is something like this, which is where your finger is going to be on this part of the joint where it rotates. And you don't want to rip that part apart. So you really have to try to get your best grip as you possibly can on those shoulders. I found it was easiest to kind of grip from the bottom kind of thing. Now that is way more infinitely easier than I think it's ever going to be again. You know, just for fun. So here's the old arm. Is that the correct side? Yeah. Plug that back in. So like you kind of get a grip underneath it a little bit. But what's so tricky about it is the fact that you have the shield on top usually with the older arms. So it's definitely not something I'm going to be doing very often anyway so because of that because it's just it's too tricky but there is the green ranger arms on there with no armbands so i honestly kind of just wish they didn't give you swappable arms and they just gave you bands that could somehow disconnect by sliding down with a hand swap or something or a hand wean off like that's i feel like that would have been infinitely easier than this but that was something that they did that they did so there is that and then we can click the helmet back on there so here is the green ranger without any armbands on him so just kind of as a regular mighty morphin ranger if you want to say you know what he would look like with no shield kind of this is sort of like the original comic uh, in the comics the original original green ranger i uh, had a power set that looked like this before he got the shield there was a whole story arc in the comics about where this shield comes from it's actually pretty cool and so this is kind of the look of that which i think it looks neat i definitely like it uh, you can also kind of have and you know what we'll do it anyway just because uh, actually, we'll do that later, maybe. <laughs> I was going to show you the bands, and we'll get to that in a second. But basically, from here, to kind of complete the retro Bandai flip head kind of look, you're going to take the two halves of the shield and just kind of put it over your shoulders and then clip them together. And then there you go. And I like how the shield also is kind of loose on there, just like it was on the original figures. So I do kind of like that. I mean, obviously, it's probably nothing I would ever display it like, but it's pretty cool. Let's kind of get a closer look at it there very shiny like I said it's just kind of sitting on there kind of just wobbling around but it's a nice detail and then you can take that original silver dragon dagger and you can slide it into the holster which I, I might have done backwards actually so you can do that or you can even use this holster for a blade blaster if you wanted to do that it does work so there are those options we'll go ahead and take the shield off and then before we fully put the dragon shield back on here since I do have to swap the arms anyway, which I'm gonna have to take them back off to do, to put the, oh, here we go. So I <laughs> see this is what I'm talking about. It's already kind of giving me some trouble. There we go. We can kind of recreate the look that he had in the episode, is this is the right one? Yeah, in the episode Gun Ho, uh, the very first episode where he gave the dragon shield to Jason. When they first met Titanus, he looked like this, where he still had the armbands and Red did not have any bands, but he had the shield. So the, it appeared very briefly, but this is technically a canon appearance of the Green Ranger with bands without a shield, so there is that. So let's go to put the shield back on here, and then before we fully wrap up with a bunch of pictures and kind of showcases of him all around as I kind of give my final thoughts, we're going to compare it to the Lightning Collection version, because I'm sure a lot of people are going to want to see that. So I'm going to put the shield back on, and we're going to cut to that. In the comparison you've all been waiting for, Super 7 Ultimate Mighty Morphin Green versus Hasbro's Lightning Collection Mighty Morphin Green. And as much as I'm a Lightning Collection guy, that's kind of my main thing, my main collectibles, this is so much better. So <laughs> I really, really like this figure quite a bit. It just looks infinitely more show accurate. This isn't a bad figure, obviously. I love Lightning Collection. I'm always going to love it. I do like Lightning Collection's articulation better than I like Super 7 Ultimates' overall. However, I think that the color of the green on here, the darker shade, is a little bit more show accurate. The shield looks more show accurate to me than this one does, just in both size and also shading with it. 
But really, what's gonna the reason why this one's certainly gonna win over it? And I, I don't really know if I like the bigger scale. I don't think I mind the bigger scale. I think I'm obviously so used to a six inch figure compared to a seven inch figure. But it's really it comes down to the helmets. Uh, if we take a look at a much closer look at the two helmets, the Hasbro one just looks pretty bad with the silver trim there where they didn't actually make it white, and just the shape of it just kind of looks a little off or something. Like it's not it's not a terrible helmet. Like just kind of on its own, I go yeah that's not bad. But then I bring this and I go. Oh yeah, but it looks a lot better there. So that is kind of a comparison there between the Lightning Collection and the Super 7 Ultimates. But obviously you also got to think about the price difference with these because when this figure came out in 2020, it was when the Lightning Collection was $20. So a figure like this today would be 25, this is 55. So I mean significantly more or significantly less than half of the cost of this. While here you're not really getting the articulation, you're getting the nice show accurate detail, you're getting a plethora of accessories to really recreate anything you'd want to do. You did get you do get even more like accurate holster with this kind of like the extra band there compared to just kind of this regular just one solid piece, if you get what I'm saying, like we kind of show you on the sides, like the holsters, you have like that extra piece like it's supposed to have. So, you know, and that kind of thing. I mean you you get some similar things, like you both get a Tommy head sculpt, you both get like the dragon dagger, obviously, swappable hands and stuff like that. And it is maybe not the most fair thing to compare a $55 figure to a $25 figure, but obviously this is kind of the main thing you're going to want to compare because it's kind of the main, you know, premium or adult collector versions of these characters that you have options for to get for your collection right now. And while I'm always going to recommend this one for the price for what you get with it, in this case, this one is going to win out in pretty much any other scenario or any comparison with detail, accuracy, accessories, and all that kind of stuff or just if you're a fan of the green ranger you might want to definitely raise up the extra money and save that up to shell out to get one of these guys and try to check one of these ones especially since this one also has been out of print for a couple years now this one is also gonna be hard to find because after the pre-order period there's obviously less of these ultimates to actually be able to track down but for him besides like restocks and stuff he's already kind of going up in price so you're always, you're also or always going to be kind of in the realm of closer to 50 dollars for a green ranger figure these days than you would have when this originally came out so in that regard, I think this is definitely going to be the winner between this comparison. However, the Lightning Collection one doesn't lose in every category. When it comes to swappable Tommy heads or civilian heads, I, I do not like the look of that. <laughs> like, I get this is kind of more of a cartoony or comic book kind of look or a toy look, but this definitely does look a lot more like Jason David Frank to me. It looks a lot more realistic and lifelike. So, in that regards, Hasbro's Lightning Collection is going to win on the likeness, but. You know that could maybe you don't even care about the likeness that much so it's one of those things to where if this is something you really care about i think hasbro definitely has this one in the bag for the lightning collection and with that that is going to do it for my video review of the super 7 ultimates mighty morphin power rangers wave one green ranger figure i can highly recommend this thing so if just from an accessory standpoint a detail and accuracy standpoint everything i've talked about here in this video I think this is an excellent Green Ranger figure for your collection. It brings a lot of stuff that we've never really had with Power Ranger figures to the table, like that sword, like that blaster. I really, really like as just a fan of Power Rangers toys in general, it's kind of one of the main things I love to talk about here on Toku Topics. I love that he has those pieces to turn him into the Bandai flip head for the 90s. It's a cool feature that I'm probably not going to use that much, but it's a really cool thing for them to include. You get pretty much any hand you would want. I like the inclusion of the Tommy head sculpts, even though I don't think that they are the absolute greatest. But this being on the shelf is going to be fantastic, alongside this box that just looks really, really pretty with it. And I think it is a great introduction to Super 7 with their ultimates for Power Rangers. So I can personally highly recommend this. So until next time, let me know down in the comments below, what do you think of the Super 7 Green Ranger figure? Do you have this for your collection? Do you plan on tracking this down? Do you think it's going to be enough to replace your 3-0 or your SH figure arts or your Power Rangers Lightning Collection version of the Green Ranger? Whatever it may be, we've had a lot of different releases of this guy and the whole Mighty Morphin team throughout the years, but I think Super 7 here has really brought a lot to the table that we haven't really seen in giving you a really good value for what you're getting. I can't deny it's expensive, it certainly is, but in some regards I definitely do think that it is worth it if you want to save up the extra money to find one for yourself or pre-order the other figures that you can right now kind of knowing what you have and what they're bringing to the table. So anything about this figure down in the comments below, I want to hear about it. And of course, huge thanks once again to Super7 for sending this figure over. I really, really appreciate that. It's amazing I get an opportunity to take a look at these here on the channel and I can't wait to show you guys the rest in this line. So until next time, you guys can follow me on Twitter at LaverRangerKey or at PR, and I'll see you all later.
To wrap up this video, I'd like to thank my $5 and above patrons, Jurassic Samurai, Macket Alchemist, Robert Browning, Static Thunder, Brendan Overland, Maji Yellow, Redstone MCPC, Comics 1017, James Darty, Monster Rocket, John Luke, Eric Berry, Tyler Bozetsky, Matthew Thorne, Josh Landry, and Pyramidus. You can support Toku Topics for as little as $1 a month on my Patreon, link in the description below.